I'm Gary Cassie. For nine years, I had debt I couldn't pay, which brought on panic attacks, antidepressants, until the kingdom of God drastically changed my life. Now, I want to help you fix the money thing. This is Gary Cassie. Fixing the money thing. What is loyalty? Qualities like allegiance, faithfulness, obedience, and trustworthiness, to name a few. Now, from Faith Life Church, Gary Cassie and his Loyalty, Your Pathway to Promotion series. Today's message, can God trust you to be loyal? Loyalty is not a big topic, is it? No, in our culture, that's not like a hot item, is it? We don't really want to get into loyalty too much. It's just not uh, too popular. But loyalty has a huge impact on your life. Huge. And so we're going to talk about that and trust it's going to benefit your life. The definition of loyalty, let's start there. Right out of the dictionary says this. It's the state or quality of being loyal, faithful to commitments or obligations, faithful adherence to a government or a leader or cause. So let me ask you, who are you loyal to? That's a good question. Can, can they depend on you to fulfill your obligations and commitments? Or maybe you need people on your team that are loyal to you, vice versa, right? I mean, being loyal is, is so critical to life. And loyal is not a feeling. I can tell my wife I'm loyal to her, I love her, but if I don't take the trash out... Ladies, you missed the perfect opportunity. Maybe it's just... <laughs> All right, two parts of loyalty you need to understand. According to the definition here, faithful to commitments or obligations, let me ask you a question. Is it possible to be faithful to your commitments and still not be loyal? Absolutely. Because if you're you know, committed to your obligations, yet you are grumbling about your boss, are you loyal? According to our definition, you're loyal to fulfill your obligations and commitments, and you're committed with loyalty to whoever you answer to, and they go together. They go together. So I want to talk about loyalty because a lot of great things happen in loyalty, and a lot of bad things happen when we have disloyalty. So we're going to jump into that. Going back, of course, we've pastored 26 years, business leaders for 38 years, and uh, we've always had staff, people, clients, a lot of things happening. But, you know, I'll give you a couple examples. And Back in the early days, you know, I was young and my staff was young. We really didn't know. We all kind of jumped into this thing without a lot of training. But uh, I did have some problems. I began to recognize I had some issues happening in my staff back in the, in the beginning. And, uh, you know, things weren't getting done. And so I, I, I gave them a homework assignment. I said, I want you to read this book. And we're going to get together and discuss it on this date. I want you to finish it. So we got together at that date for our meeting, and I went around and asked them, did they read the book? And not one person read it. Now, there's, a, there's a symptom deeper than knowing how to read there. Would you agree? All right. And so uh, the same season, we had uh, one of our children's Sunday events. You know, our, our children's church flopped. It, was, it, was just, it wasn't good. And Pastor Drinda asked our full-time staff children's leader, uh, you know, how, how much did you prepare for this? I mean, it, it just, I, I give them credit for being honest. They said, I did zero preparation for it. Uh, you know, just an example. And another time in this season, we had a lady. Now, we had one door coming into the church back then. It was a warehouse we had church in. And uh, this particular Sunday, we had a lady back there. And she was the greeter. And as she greeted people, she had made up a homemade flyer for a Sunday morning event that she was hosting and putting on the following Sunday. So everyone coming into church was getting a flyer from this greeter to skip church and attend this event the next Sunday without me knowing it. <laughs> Bless her heart, yes. <laughs> now, if you would have asked any of my staff or any of these people if they were loyal and they loved us, they would say yes. But obviously, they needed some help in training. Actually, without knowing it, they were being disloyal. And let me say this. You cannot build anything with disloyal people. If you try, you'll try to pick up false responsibility. You'll be micromanaging everything, which almost took me out of the ministry. 
You have to have loyal people. But listen, people need to be taught this. And again, this is a young staff. We had, you know, we had to you know, mentor. How many realize mentoring is important? Absolutely. And so we need to mentor and train. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 2 says this, Now it is required that those who have been given a trust must prove faithful. Must prove faithful. Loyalty is not convenient. Loyalty will cost you something, but it is required. It is required. Luke chapter uh, 6, 10. Whoever can be trusted with very little can be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will be dishonest with much. 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 10. Leaders must first be tested, and then if there's nothing against them, let them serve as deacons or as leaders, as we're talking about. Such wisdom in these two scriptures that you need to embrace in your life. So why is loyalty so critical? Why is it so critical? Because we're going to war. There's going to be pressure that comes. And in the midst of pressure, that's not the time to find out that the two before that you've built the house with cannot handle the weight. Right? You want to know before you get into the battle that there's been some testing, there's been some refining, there's some loyalty, that when you get into that battle, you don't have to look around and you've been abandoned, but no, your team is there, they've been tested, you can put confidence in that team, and this is vital to your life. Leaders, listen to me, business leaders, listen to me. There's no shortcuts. You know it if you've tried it. You try to shortcut the process, you're going to pay the price. People need to be mentored and tested, and this is vital. Leaders, listen to me. When you put someone under your authority as you hire people or uh, you come on staff in the ministry, you need to remember this, that that person's voice will be magnified by your position, the leader's position. In other words, if I bring someone on staff, people are going to hear them speak as if they're hearing me speak. They're going to assume that whatever they're saying, I have already okayed. Is that right? And so you have to be careful. Remember, you're going to gain influence if you're coming under someone's authority. And leaders, you're giving influence. You're giving them your influence. You're giving them a, a bigger platform, a bigger voice. And you need to make sure that you both sound the same before you give them the platform. Amen. Come on now. Because you're going to find problems if you don't do that. So leaders, listen to me. You need to test people. You don't bring them in close because if they have a different voice, people are going to think that their voice is your voice. And you may not end up where you think you're trying to get to, right, leaders? So you have to be in agreement, right, in agreement. All right, so let's move on. Now, as a pastor or as a leader, I'm sure that you see people that have potential as leaders. And that's what, that's what you look for, right? That's what I look for. But I also understand that it may not be seasoned yet. Their maturity may not be ready yet. I have to understand there's the process of mentoring and leading and guiding them that must take place. There's a lot of people that have spiritual giftings as well as natural giftings that it does not qualify them for leadership yet. Okay, not yet. But how many know it's so easy to bypass that testing process when, you're in, when you need someone desperately in, in that position? And that's what you cannot, you cannot cannot violate this process. Matthew chapter 12, verse 30 says this, whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. That's what Jesus said. Pretty powerful words. Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. See, times will get tough. Any venture, any business, any church, anything, there will be pressure. Again, we want to make sure that we're all on the same team. Listen, anyone can become disloyal. Anyone. Satan's number one plot is division. The process is disloyalty and offense. And you see it everywhere in life. Understand this, open rebellion never starts openly, ever. It always starts in the fringes, underground. Never see it. You know, it's like a rotten tree. I remember we had this beautiful, 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 big oak tree. Had a storm come through and the whole thing fell down. I was totally shocked when I went outside to look at it. It was hollow. See, you've got to find out what's inside people. 
They may look great on the outside. Their giftings may look great. And God gave them those giftings for a purpose. But leaders, you have a job to bring that out in a proper season and a proper mentorship for their sake and yours, right?